As early as I can remember, I loved film, and I've I've been fascinated by the by the the uh, the imagination and the create creativity of film from as early as I can remember as a, as a child. From watching films, there was, uh, you know, as a, as a teenager, an inherent curiosity about how shots were done, how cameras worked, how a zoom lens worked, what, what it all was. You know, I was uh, uh, quite a techno nerd. You know, I was the president of the science club in my, in my high school. I remember at the time in high school, I was also in the theater arts department and, and writing and producing plays and, and, and working with, you know, neophyte uh, actors at that time, so there was a definite sense of wanting to tell stories, wanting to to fulfill that what I call the narrative drive, the drive to try to tell a story, uh, which I think is is psychologically inherent in some people, the need to want to tell a story to the group. And it was from back in Neolithic times when you're sitting around a campfire, you know, there's always like one guy that thinks he can get everybody else to laugh or whatever with some story of a giant bison. The most invaluable training that I got was the next stage, which was then working on a real movie. And that was working for Roger Corman. And I don't care if it was the bottom of the heap, uh, that was absolutely invaluable crash training, nearly crash and burn training, because people people burn out very, very rapidly in that in that, you know, low budget independent area. We had a big budget, you know, the budget going in was I think $115 million plus the cost of the of the studio facility down in Mexico. So maybe Fox had at, at risk at that point projecting 130 million for a costume drama that was going to be three hours long, and they knew that going in. I said, "This is a three-hour movie. If you don't want to make a three-hour movie, then don't make the movie." Every film I've ever worked on has gone through like, you know, what's it about? Oh, that's really cool. Oh, I really like to make that. Oh, gee, oh, it's going to cost a lot of money. Oh, um, oh shit, things are going really wrong. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is horrible. This is horrible. It's horrible. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's great. Oh, we're making a lot of money. You know, it goes through this unbelievable sine wave, you know, and then the sine wave repeats when you start on the next project. Hey, that's pretty cool. Oh, it's costing a lot of money. Oh, no. You know, it just, it's over and over. It's the same damn sine wave. On Titanic, the amplitude was, you know, just so much greater. And uh, to, to show them that, that I wasn't being, um, you know, just kind of cavalier about it, I said, all right, just, well, first of all, to, to jump back, I, I gave up half my salary just to get the film greenlit. Just to get them to into the ring, my you know I'll still have my back end and I'll still have part of my salary and you know what that's just what this film is seeming to shape up to be. By that point, I'd already been on the movie two years and they were threatening to not make it, so I thought, all right, fine, I'll I'll just bite the bullet this time. So now I'm into the film and things are even worse. I said, all right, take the rest of my salary. It sh it certainly shows that I completely believe in the film because if I ever make any if I ever make a dime from this film it's going to be on the back end and what I what I felt I was demonstrating with that was that 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 I had not sort of gotten them into this situation intentionally that I was willing to take responsibility for it that it was just happening to all of us now a whole bunch of hidden costs have come out that have just hit just like like a our, an artillery barrage, just day after day, boom, boom, boom. All of a sudden, the budget has jumped up in the space of, I remember it being over about a two-week period, the budget has jumped up like $20 million, or the cost of the film has jumped up like $20 million. I'm like, it's going up faster than, than, than I'm shooting. It's impossible. You know, I mean, it was just nuts. And I said, all right, fine, that's really embarrassing to me. So why don't you just take all my points, too? That's the best I can do. But what I'm not going to do is work for three years, whether you pay me or not, and do a bad movie. So they went, yeah, yeah, sure, kid. You can give us your points. You can do whatever you want because there aren't going to be any profits anyway. So at a mid-management level there, somebody got the bright idea that let's not accept that offer. Let's not write up a contract or a letter formalizing that. So they never did. So legally, they never accepted my offer. Now, cut to a year later film is the highest grossing film in the history of motion pictures because now they you know they they owe me like an enormous amount of money <laughs> it, it it's just it's just the, the strangest thing in in in, uh, in the history of film that it actually worked out you know there was something about making the film the way it was supposed to be that ultimately was the magic formula it was the magic formula for getting all that money back all the things that they knew and all the things that i knew from previous experience 
could not have solved that problem. We were in an unexplored territory. We were trying a magic spell that had never been tried before.